For the biologists of Monomoy National Wildlife Refuge off the coast of Cape Cod, conserving one species of birds means preserving another. Wildlife biologist Kate Iaquinto is part of a team of biologists working to restore the common turd colony and the roseate turn colony on the island. We have a very large common turn colony. Um, it's one of the things that we spend most of our time on. The reason that we protect our common turn colony and, and monitor our turn colony is because roseate terns, which are endangered species, nest with large productive common turn colonies. So we need to know how many pairs we have, if they're uh, fledging a lot of chicks and how productive they are so that we know if we're doing the right things to manage for our turns and in, in turn manage for roseate turns. While common turns are able to aid the development of roseate turns, biologists are needed to promote the overall growth of both colonies. In the late 1990s, an avian diversity project was started to bring native nesting species back to the islands. Coastal islands are really important for a lot of nesting birds. Um, specifically a lot of rare, threatened, and endangered birds. They are undisturbed, relatively undisturbed by humans, and the terns can nest here. You won't see common terns nesting on mainland beaches. So it's really important to preserve the few remote coastal sites that there are um, for large colonies like ours. Iaquinto said common terns typically nest on barrier beaches, spits, coastal islands, and Monomoy is a mixture of what they prefer. They tend to like a mosaic of grass and sand, so um, this is a thicker kind of habitat than um, you see them in typically, but they also nest on bare sand. Monitoring productivity daily, as well as keeping track of numbered bands, are just some of the steps towards conservation. We're going to each productivity plot, which are these small fenced areas, and checking all of the nests and all of the chicks in each plot. Each of the plots have been monitored since mid to late May. And when they hatch, we band all the chicks in the plots, and then we watch the chicks until they can fly. Uh, this guy has, fit, has fledged, so he'll count towards our productivity count for this year. We should see him flying out on the beach any day, so we'll let him go. Every year we try to re-trap a bunch of adults that are already banded. Basically what we do is we look up their band numbers. Um, we can tell if they are banded here as a chick, if they are banded here as an adult, or if they are banded at another site. We'll report them to the bird banding lab and we'll get a report back um, saying where they are banded. By monitoring the nesting species, managing their habitat, and by promoting colony growth through public outreach, biologists have been able to foster and expand the turn populations. This past year we had a burn and we feel that it was really successful in getting more of our turns back. This area here that you can see used to be a very thick bush of uh, rugosa rose and bayberry and poison ivy. Um, and this year, because of the burn, it was, you know, um, brought down to a much lower level and now the terns can nest here. And we have eight pairs of roseates in our main colony this year, so that's a great success. Um, and we wouldn't know that we had eight pairs of roseates in our colony without monitoring the common turn colony as closely as we do. While monitoring turn populations has increased nesting, work on the refuge is never complete. Islands like Monomoy are very important. In the past, we've had probably more turns than we could handle at this site because it's, you know, one of few nesting sites available. So um, the population fluctuates, but it's very important that we keep this here for them because it's one of the remaining viable habitats for them today.